Hey everyone, it's Alexander Robinson. Welcome to the channel. So this is a video that I've been wanting to make for some time. I always wanted to do an updated Blu-ray DVD, now 4K, collection video. I did my first one way back in 2015. I've done a couple of update videos where I say, hey, here are some of the new movies that I got. I've done a few individual Blu-ray reviews, but never have I done an actual updated collection video until now. Now. Considering that this is the 10 year anniversary of this YouTube channel, uh, and some of you have been requesting that I do this video, now's the best time to do it. Uh, I don't remember the order I did the Blu-rays in last time, I think it was just kind of randomized. Uh, but this time I'm going to be going in alphabetical order. Uh, so uh, let's just get things started. This is going to be a very long video. I don't know how long it's going to take me to record, but it's going to be a while. So enough prolonging this, let's get started. Again, in alphabetical order, we're kicking things off with 10 Cloverfield Lane. This is my favorite of the Cloverfield films. Uh, I enjoy the first one, kinda. The Cloverfield Paradox sucks ass, but this is my favorite. Mary Elizabeth Winstead and John Goodman are absolutely fantastic. Uh, and it's from the same director as Prey, which I hope gets a Blu-ray release at some point. Next up, I have 10 Things I Hate About You. Uh, Never seen this movie, but it has Heath Ledger and Julia Stiles in it. I'd like to watch it someday. I uh, got 101 Dalmatians. Not my favorite Disney animated film, but it was one I remember fondly from my childhood. Then I've got 21 and 22 Jump Street. I admittedly have not seen these movies, but they are from Phil Lord and Chris Miller, and since everyone tells me how funny they are, Need to make these a priority at some point. 500 Days of Summer. This movie came out in 2009. was one of my favorite movies of that year. And it came out in the summer of 2009 where there was a lot of crap going on at that time. But uh, yeah, this movie is perfect. James Cameron's The Abyss on DVD. Uh, I want there to be a Blu-ray release of this film because it is so good. I reviewed it last year, so you can check out that review. The Adventures of Tintin, a very underrated Steven Spielberg film. I think it's his only animated one, and certainly a better Indiana Jones movie than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and especially Dial of Destiny. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. I've got the Diamond Edition of Aladdin, which is my favorite Disney animated film. I've got the 4K Walt Disney Signature Collection, uh, version of Aladdin, even though Walt Disney was not alive by the time this movie came out. And I have the Guy Ritchie remake, which I don't dislike at all. I think it's a lot of fun. The 60th anniversary Blu-ray of Alice in Wonderland, my favorite of the Disney animated films when Walt was still alive. Ambulance. The trailers for this movie looked like a lot of fun, and it ended up being a Michael Bay movie that I actually like. A pretty good time. American Graffiti. Even though this didn't make it into my top 100 favorite movies list, this is George Lucas's best film next to Star Wars, a great coming of age movie that actually turns 50 this year. Yeah, it came out in 1973, and if you haven't seen this, it's absolutely worth watching. The American Pie Trilogy on DVD. I admit that I have not watched any of these movies in a while, so I'm not quite sure how they hold up. Uh, but I remember liking the first one, and even two is okay. Now, in terms of a movie that I have not seen that I should get around to seeing, Amelie. Yes, I admit I have not seen this movie. Need to get around to that. You're going to see a lot of movies in this collection that I have not seen but need to. Which is specifically the reason why I own them, so I can eventually get to them. Anchorman, the rich mahogany edition. Uh, this is instantly quotable and has some fantastic scenes. The Apartment. It's in my top 20 of favorite movies of all time, my favorite Billy Wilder film, and my favorite movie to watch around New Year's Eve. It's a masterpiece. Argo, a fantastic movie from Ben Affleck. I don't like it as much as The Town, but it's still one of my favorite movies of the year it came out. And rest in peace to Alan Arkin. Speaking of Ben Affleck, I asked Mike, wouldn't it be easier to train astronauts to be drillers than drillers to become astronauts? And he just told me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, I've actually never seen Armageddon from beginning to end, but that little bit from the commentary is just pure gold. I love how it circulates around social media every now and then. And plus, it's the Criterion Collection, so it just feels like something I need to own. Like, yeah, there was a point when the Criterion Collection actually released Armageddon on DVD. Much like the Criterion Channel is now showing Showgirls. Oh yeah, that's a thing that's happening right now. Arrival from Denis Villeneuve. I think this might be my favorite of his films, even more than Sicario, even more than Blade Runner 2049. 
uh, this is his masterpiece in my opinion. Speaking of masterpieces, The Artist. Uh, I have not upgraded this to Blu-ray. I probably should at some point because it's one of my favorite movies of the last decade. The collector's edition of Avatar on Blu-ray. I still love this movie even 14 years later. I also own Avatar The Way of Water. I debated on whether or not getting this on 4K, but I just figured I can't tell the difference between 4K and Blu-ray, so I just settled on Blu-ray. The Back to the Future trilogy, the 25th anniversary edition more likely. Uh, you know me, I love the original Back to the Future. It's my favorite movie of all time and I love the sequels just as much. The Bad Guys, what I consider to be the beginning of a new era for DreamWorks animation. I didn't see uh, Teenage Kraken earlier this year, but I heard kind of mixed things about it. Uh, maybe I'll get around to it at some point, but for this movie, I love it. Bambi! Uh, the last Disney movie of Disney's golden age before the odd package film era. Batman the movie, even though I have not seen this or the Adam West show, uh, the scene with the bomb and the shark is just iconic for me. Those scenes will always be stuck in my head. Hopefully I'll get around to that series one day, but for now I've got the Batman. Uh, this is, movie's amazing. Even though I don't love the first hour of this movie, the next two hours are just pure spectacle. I love the last two hours of this movie. And I like the first hour, just don't love it. I've got the Diamond Edition Blu-ray of Beauty and the Beast, as well as the Walt Disney Signature Collection of Beauty and the Beast on 4K, even though, once again, he was not alive when this movie came out. And uh, guys, you're going to be seeing this a lot. I own the same movie multiple times, so um, usually there are movies that I love that are in my top 100 list, so just keep your eyes open. And speaking of movies in my top 100 list, The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, uh, uh, the most direct inspiration for Godzilla. A really good movie. Beetlejuice, a great movie from Tim Burton. He directed the hell out of Beetlejuice and Michael Keaton did an excellent job playing Beetlejuice. There, I said it three times. All right, so this next one's interesting. The Best of Mickey Blu-ray. This was actually sent to me by the Disney Movie Club. It's an exclusive of theirs. I didn't ask for it, but when they offer you Blu-rays and you don't answer, they just send it to you anyway. So I didn't ask for this, they sent it to me anyway, but it's a good excuse to have both Fantasia and Fantasia 2000 on Blu-ray because I had it on DVD and the Blu-ray was just sold out for so long. Better Call Saul season six on Blu-ray. I love this show. I'd love to get around to reviewing it at some point, but I don't have the rest of the seasons on Blu-ray. Should rectify that at some point. Big Hero 6. This movie's admittedly a lot of fun. It didn't hold up as well watching it a second time, but I liked it still. The Big Lebowski. This is the uh, limited edition steel book that looks like a comic book cover. It's probably, no, it's not probably. It is my favorite Coen Brothers film, even though Joel Coen only directed this. Not Ethan, but both of them. Yeah, both of them wrote the screenplay, so it technically counts as a Coen Brothers movie. The Big Sick, one of my favorite movies from 2017, the best year for movies in the last decade. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I don't own the sequels, I'd like to own the sequels, and more importantly, upgrade this movie to Blu-ray because it's a lot of fun. Birdman and the uh, Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance. Yeah, that's the long title. Uh, really great movie, one of my favorites of 2014, but it wasn't my pick for best picture. I would have picked Boyhood over this. Now next up is one of my favorite underrated comedies, a movie that just kills me every time I think about it. It's instantly quotable, it's Black Dynamite. There are so many lines that uh, just stick out to me, like, who the hell is interrupting my kung fu? Or my favorite, haha, I threw that shit before I walked in the room. One day I'll review it because there's a lot to say about Black Dynamite. Blade Runner, this is the digibook that contains, uh, what does it contain? The theatrical cut, the international theatrical cut, the director's cut, and the final cut. Huh? And this is a fantastic movie, Ridley Scott, one of Ridley Scott's best. Blade Runner 2049, this is my second favorite of Denise Villeneuve's films. A lot of people say that this is better than the first one. For me, it's still amazing, but I think the first one is just much better. Blazing Saddles, the Mel Brooks classic that probably couldn't be made today because I don't think a lot of people have the courage to make another movie like this. The Blues Brothers. This probably has my favorite John Belushi performance next to Bluto in Animal House. And the car chase in this film is just pure madness. I love it. Bonnie and Clyde. This is one of my favorite movies that I have not upgraded to Blu-ray at some point. But the first time I saw this was in film class. I loved it. So I had to get the DVD immediately 
and uh, because I hadn't fully upgraded to Blu-ray at that point, but I should because this is a masterpiece. Booksmart, a very funny, very clever teen comedy from Olivia Wilde, and uh, I'd say it's better than Superbad. A million times better than Superbad. Brave, I find the reaction to this movie very similar to Elemental, where there's a good chunk of people that don't like it, but I personally loved it. Uh, I I really don't get the hate. Huh? I wouldn't have given this the best animated feature Oscar that year. I would have given it to Wreck-It Ralph, but still, this is this is really good. Brave Heart. I have not seen this movie. I'm sorry. There, you're going to be seeing a lot of those. I own a lot of classic movies that I just haven't seen and should probably get around to. However, a classic film that I have seen is Breakfast at Tiffany's. Uh, this is, I think, my mom's second favorite movie of all time. It's absolute perfection except for Mickey Rooney, but. That's pretty much it. Bruce Almighty. As a kid, this was my favorite Jim Carrey movie. Yeah? I recently rewatched it on a plane last year when traveling back from San Antonio, and I was amazed that it still holds up. Uh, really good. A Bug's Life. Huh? This was one of the most important movies to me growing up, and it's Kind of weird that people forget about this film. I, I absolutely adore Bugs Life. Cabaret, also known as The Godfather's Biggest Competition in 1972. Uh, I first saw this in 2020. I did a review for it. I listed it as one of my favorite film discoveries of that year. It's truly a fantastic film. And it was the first time I ever been fully introduced to Liza Minnelli and oh boy is this woman talented. The Cabin in the Woods, one of the most creative horror films that came out in the last decade. Say what you want about Joss Whedon right now as a person, but uh, his script for this is pretty damn good. And Drew Goddard also directed the hell out of it. It's a really fun time. What is also a fun time, but maybe not for the right reasons, is Captain America. I told this story in my review, but my brother gave this to me as a gag gift, and I laughed for a good five minutes because I'm like, why the hell would you give me this? But I still own it. It's uh, been about Almost 10 years since I got this as a gag gift, and it's still in my collection. From one captain to another captain, I've got Captain Phillips. This is probably my favorite movie, no, my second favorite movie of 2013. Tom Hanks really got robbed in terms of a Best Actor nomination because he's that good. He's also really good in Steven Spielberg's Catch Me If You Can, one of his more underrated films with Leonardo DiCaprio. Chef from John Favreau, in my opinion, the ultimate food porn movie, but also one of the best movies of the year came out, 2014. Chicken Run, uh, the first uh, feature-length film from Aardman Animation, the same company that did Wallace and Gromit, and from the same director. Uh, it's basically The Great Escape with Chickens. A lot of fun, very funny. Next up, I have another Disney Movie Club exclusive that I did not ask for, which is the Christmas Classics 4 Movie Collection, which ironically enough, None of these are from Disney themselves. They're all from uh, 20th Century Fox, or I'm sorry, 20th Century Studios now, but it comes with uh, the George C. Scott version of A Christmas Carol, the Richard Attenborough version of A Miracle on 34th Street, uh, the original Home Alone, and the smash holiday classic movie, Jingle All The Way! <laughs> if you've ever seen the Conan via satellite bits, you'll get that reference. Uh. Cinderella, I reviewed this movie two years ago. I've said that it's one of my least favorite movies in Disney's animation lineup, and uh, I don't exactly know why I still own this. I guess because it's historical, so that's why. Citizen Kane. I have learned to grow a bigger appreciation for this movie as time goes on, though I have not seen it since uh, my film class in 2012. So I look forward to re-watching this movie at some point now that I'm in my 30s, but I have no desire to upgrade it to the Criterion version. Then we have Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Steven Spielberg's follow-up to Jaws, and I have to admit, it's a movie that I've seen, I love what I saw, but I fell asleep in the ending, so I have no idea how the film ends. I should probably rectify that mistake. I know someone who will definitely appreciate this next purchase, Cocaine Bear. Is this as crazy as I would have liked it to be? Not really, but I think for a man versus nature movie, it gets the job done. It reminds me of those old When Nature Attacks films from the 70s that came out in the wake of Jaws. Uh, it's a fun time. Coco. This movie really did mess me up. Uh, it's, it's just fantastic. Come Drink With Me, a really creative and fun martial arts film that I saw in film class uh, 10 years ago, actually. That's right, I reviewed this on this channel. Wow. Huh, there's a lot of movies that I just completely forgot I talked about, and this is one of them. 
Maybe it deserves an updated review at some point. Commando. I recently saw this at a friend's place and I just love it. It encompasses everything that is awesome and awful about Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. It's just, God, it, it's, it's awesome. I love it. What is best in life? I've actually never seen Conan the Barbarian in full. Uh, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger's I guess first official movie, he did Hercules in New York and he had a few background roles in some other films, but I think this is the first one that everyone remembers him in, even more so than The Terminator. The Conjuring. I didn't see this movie until it came out in Blu-ray and it's really effective. Uh, I don't own any of the other uh, Conjuring universe films. In fact, I keep forgetting that this movie is part of a cinematic universe. Uh, uh, one that I don't think is all that effective, honestly. The Cornetto Trilogy, which comes with Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and The World's End. Uh, uh, this is my least favorite, this is my favorite. Uh, I haven't seen Hot Fuzz since it came out in theaters and I desperately need to watch it again because it's, it's, it's good. It's really good. Now in the same vein as Commando, I've got Crank and its sequel, Crank High Voltage. Uh, both of these are just ridiculous fun. And I would love to review these as a double feature at some point because they are just a blast. Cruella. This is another movie that the Disney Movie Club sent to me without me asking for it. But luckily I do like this movie so uh, yeah, I own it. Didn't plan to own it on 4K but uh, you know, it's, it's a good movie regardless. Next up is Dave. Uh, even though a lot of people think on Ghostbusters when it comes to Ivan Reitman movies, this one should not be overlooked. Uh, like Cabaret, I saw it for the first time in 2020 and it's just such a clever film. Next we have George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. This is the Ultimate Edition DVD set because finding a Blu-ray of this film is extremely hard. And then I've also got Day of the Dead from uh, Scream Factory. I do own Night of the Living Dead. Huh? And normally I like to keep franchises together, but I have a very specific reason why I don't have Night of the Living Dead paired up with Dawn and Day. Now speaking of keeping film franchises together, when it comes to cinematic universes, especially ones where the first film in that series does not begin with the same letter as the series itself, I alphabetize the cinematic universes in terms of what the series is known as. So next up we've got the DC Animated Universe, which so far I only own Batman the animated series which comes with the Mask of the Phantasm and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero movies uh, as well as Superman the animated series. Uh, uh, I love both of these. Uh, they're fantastic and I would love it if Warner Brothers reissued Justice League and Justice League Unlimited on Blu-ray because that would just make this feel a lot more complete and uh, uh, spoilers ahead, even though it's not part of the DC Animated Universe, I don't own the Teen Titans series on Blu-ray. I would love to at some point, but right now I just don't. And moving on from the DC Animated Universe, we come to the slowly dying DC Extended Universe. Now this is not a series I love. There are some series where I am a completionist, I have to own all of them. I don't love the DC EU enough to own all those movies. But what I do own is Wonder Woman. This is a Target exclusive digibook. Uh, my favorite movie of the series, uh, or it, it goes back and forth uh, between first favorite and second favorite. Uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, which out of all the DCEU movies that I own, this is my least favorite, but it's still pretty entertaining. Uh, Shazam, love this movie, hate the sequel. Birds of Prey, which is highly underrated, and I think the same person who appreciated me owning Cocaine Bear will appreciate this. And then uh, tied with Wonder Woman for my favorite of the series, The Suicide Squad. And uh, because of how good this movie is and Peacemaker, which I unfortunately do not own, there's a reason why James Gunn is running things at DC now. Although I have to admit his uh, praise of The Flash has me a little concerned because uh, that movie stinks. Despicable Me 2. Uh, this is my favorite of Illumination's films and one of three of their movies that I actually own on Blu-ray. I do have the first Despicable Me on Blu-ray but you'll find out sooner or later why it's not paired with the second one. Dial M for Murder. Uh, 1954 from Alfred Hitchcock starring Grace Kelly the same year both of them did uh, what's it called? Rear Window. Why did it take me so long to remember that movie? Uh, I don't own a 3D uh, TV, so I would love to know what this movie looks like in 3D. The Die Hard 25th Anniversary Collection on Blu-ray. This contains the first four movies. Uh, I have no desire to uh, upgrade this to get the fifth one because uh, 
Even though I've only seen the first Die Hard, I will just take everyone's word that a good day to Die Hard is crap. Uh, District 9, the only good movie from Neil Blomkamp, but it's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's fantastic. I have fingers crossed that Gran Turismo could be fun or good, but uh, after Elysium and Chappie, especially Chappie, I don't have that much faith. Dodgeball, a true underdog story. I reviewed this when uh, things shut down in 2020, and this movie is so funny. It still holds up just as well as it did when it came out. Dollhouse, season one. I don't know why I own this. Oh, actually, I do know why. Uh, when the Avengers first came out, I was in that big I gotta see everything Joss Whedon craze, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel and Firefly. And uh, I never actually saw this. I don't think I'll ever get around to it, so I don't know why I still have this. Double Indemnity, a classic film noir film from Billy Wilder. I know the Criterion Collection recently uh, released their own version of it. Uh, and I would like to upgrade at some point, but this edition right here is still pretty cool, even if I never upgrade to Criterion. Drag Me to Hell. This was Sam Raimi's next movie after the Spider-Man trilogy. And I remember not liking it when it first came out, but I've grown a little more fond of it and want to rewatch it again. Dread. This was one of the few movies that I didn't see in theaters, heard such good word of mouth that I bought it blindly on Blu-ray and didn't regret it a bit. In fact, one of my uh, college dorm mates, uh, not roommates, but dorm mates, uh, asked me to borrow the Blu-ray, and uh, they asked to borrow it for a day. They held on to it for a good two weeks, but I got it back. Uh, that goes to show you how much uh, people were like, why didn't I see this movie earlier? Dunkirk. This might not be my favorite Christopher Nolan movie. Uh, the Dark Knight still holds that title, but I think this may be his best directed film. I mean, at the time I'm recording this, I have not seen Oppenheimer, so I'll, uh, I'll leave a link to the uh, review here to see if this, uh, if what I just said about this being his best directed film is outdated. Now from my childhood, I've got Ed, Ed and Eddie seasons one and two on DVD. I know they recently released the complete series on DVD, but to be totally honest, if it doesn't have the holiday specials or the uh, TV movie, then I don't consider it the complete series. So I have no real desire to upgrade to the complete edition set, especially considering that these first two seasons are the best. Especially, uh, there's a charm that season one has that the other seasons just don't quite reach. The Edge of Seventeen from Kelly Freeman Craig, the director of Are You There God, It's Me, Margaret. Uh, I like this movie a little better than that, but both are excellent. Continuing in the vein of movies that I missed in theaters, but heard such phenomenal word of mouth on that I had to buy it blindly on Blu-ray, Edge of Tomorrow, or as the Blu-ray box wants you to say, live, die, repeat. Uh, this was a fantastic Tom Cruise action movie. Encanto on 4K. This was one, again, where the Disney Movie Club sent it to me. I didn't ask for it, but I love Encanto, so I've got no complaints on this one. Then I've got E.T. the Extraterrestrial, the 30th anniversary Blu-ray from 2012, and the a uh, 35th anniversary 4K edition from 2017. I don't get the backlash that some people have towards these movies because they're these movies. Uh, this movie because I'm holding two versions of the same movie. Uh, it's a masterpiece. E.T.'s a masterpiece. And uh, the ride at Universal Studios Florida is just excellent. Everybody Wants Some, a very underrated coming-of-age film from Richard Linklater. I absolutely love it. And I put this movie on every once in a while to put myself in a good mood or when I'm just missing Texas. Uh, yeah, it's, if you haven't seen this movie, you should check it out. Then I've got Everything Everywhere All at Once, probably the most memorable Best Picture winner that uh, has been given the award in recent memory, probably since Return of the King. Even though I love movies like The Artist and Shape of Water, I think this is a little more memorable. All right, it's Evil Dead time. I got The Evil Dead on Blu-ray. This is a bare bones version from, yep, Anchor Bay. No surprise there. Evil Dead 2, my favorite of the series. And then Army of Darkness, or Evil Dead 3, or The Mid-Evil Dead. I don't own the remake, and I don't own Evil Dead Rise, because I don't particularly care for those films. And I also don't own Ash vs. the Evil Dead, but I've heard great things about that series. Ex Machina, another movie that I missed out in theaters but blindly bought on Blu-ray to no regrets at all. A fantastic movie from Alex Garland, one of my favorites of the last decade. I've got the Fast and Furious 6 film collection. These are a lot of fun. Uh, in this set, uh, 
one, five, and six are my favorites. But uh, my favorite of all of them is Furious 7. It's a great send off to Paul Walker and honestly, this is where the franchise should have ended. Everyone has said that, but it really is true. But then again, I also own Hobbs and Shaw, which I fucked up on. <laughs> I've shown Hobbs and Shaw. I enjoy this movie for what it is. It's stupid, it's not really that good, but it's a lot of fun. Fast Times at Ridgemont High, an excellent high school film from 1982 and gave us uh, uh, Sean Penn as Spicoli and uh, one of the all-time great scenes uh, with uh, Phoebe Cates. You know what I'm talking about. Ferris Bueller's Day Off from John Hughes. Uh, I reviewed this when the lockdowns were going on. It didn't make it to my top 100 favorite movies list, but it's still an amazing movie regardless. Finding Nemo. I didn't have that much of an appreciation for this movie when it came out in 2003, but as I've gotten older, I've grown to love this movie more and more. Firefly uh, uh, on DVD. Uh, even with my negative feelings towards Joss Whedon right now, uh, I still love this series. There's so many things of his that I still really love regardless of him being a terrible person, and Firefly is one of them. That being said, I have not seen the movie Serenity. The, uh, like The Big Lebowski, this is the limited edition steel book uh, that looks like a comic book cover. And uh, I've heard good things about this, heard some bad things, so I'll be curious to watch this for myself. Forgetting Sarah Marshall, this is a great breakup comedy and probably the best thing you can watch uh, if you've gone through a terrible breakup. Freaky, a really great take on Freaky Friday, but as a horror movie, both Catherine Newton and Vince Vaughn, especially Vince Vaughn, are just excellent. Game Night, a very underrated comedy that I think this movie made money, but not a lot of people talk about it. Uh, um, ranked in my uh, 10 underrated movies of the last decade. It's really good if you haven't seen it. Huh? All right, big franchise time. I'm gonna try to speed run through this as much as possible, but it's gonna be really hard. Uh, Gamera, this is the Shout Factory DVD, Gamera the Giant Monster. Gamera vs. Barugan, uh, again from Shout Factory. Double feature of Gamera vs. Gauss and Gamera vs. Virus. Huh? Gamera vs. Gwiron and Gamera vs. Jiger and Gamera vs. Zigra and Gamera the Super Monster. Uh, the the uh, what's it called? The Showa era Gamera movies are a mixed bag, but then I own the Gamera trilogy on Blu ray from Shutsuke Kaneko, and these are excellent films. Even if you're not into giant uh, Japanese monster movies, this is worth your time 100%. And I'm really looking forward to the Gamera anime that's coming out on uh, Netflix later this year. Uh, Gamera's coming back, guys! I'm excited. Get out! Jordan Peele's first directorial debut. I remember. I think we all saw the trailers for this movie and thought, wow, this looks really bad. And it ended up being a great movie, one of the best of 2017, and got Jordan Peele an Oscar for Best Original Screenplay. It goes to show you that trailers do lie. Ghost in the Shell. My brother actually got this to me as a gift. I can't remember if it was for my birthday or Christmas, but uh, I've always been interested in seeing this. I've seen the Scarlett Johansson version, which is lame, and this is actually from the same writer as the Gamma Trilogy, uh, Kazunori Ito. So. Give me a reason to watch this at some point. Ghostbusters 1 and 2. The first one's my favorite comedy of all time. The second one's very much rinse and repeat. I don't own the 2016 movie because I don't like it. And while I liked Ghostbusters Afterlife, I'm not in a real hurry to get that on Blu-ray. Yeah? But I am looking forward to the next one. The Godfather Trilogy on Blu-ray. I've seen the first one. It's a masterpiece. The second one's equally as good. Maybe a little better. I am not in a rush to see the third one, but these are movies that I should definitely review at some point. And whenever I review those movies, I will force myself to watch part three. So that was the Godfather trilogy. Uh, that means next up is... That's right, we are now at the uh, thing that defines me uh, on this YouTube channel. And uh, this is gonna be another speed run. Uh, so really quickly, destroy all monsters. Uh, Godzilla vs. Gigan on DVD. Uh, the Return of Godzilla on Blu-ray. Uh, Godzilla vs. Biollante on Blu-ray. Uh, the Sony double features of Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah and Godzilla vs. Mothra on Blu-ray. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 and Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Godzilla vs. Destroya and Godzilla vs. Megagirus. They uh, missed one in the middle right there. Roland Emmerich's Godzilla on DVD. Why do I own this? Because it's such a historically bad movie, especially within the Godzilla franchise, that it's worth owning. When it comes to bad movies, I need to have a specific reason for why I own them. Whether I 
get some joy out of it or because they're historically bad movies. Huh? Uh, but I do own Godzilla the series, which I've not seen every episode of the show, but this is infinitely better than the Roland Emmerich film based on what I've seen. Uh, Godzilla 2000 on Blu-ray. Uh, this is the only one of the Sony Blu-rays that actually is on its own. GMK, Giant Monsters All Out Attack, and Godzilla against Mechagodzilla on Blu-ray. These are the two best of the Millennium series. And then I also own Godzilla against Mechagodzilla on DVD. Why? Well, it's because the subtitles on this DVD correspond with the actual Japanese script, whereas the subtitles on the Blu-ray are matching the dub, aka dub titles. So if I want a more accurate viewing of uh, this film in Japanese, I'm keeping the DVD. Godzilla Tokyo SOS and Godzilla Final Wars, even though Final Wars lacks a lot of monster action, it is still wildly entertaining and lots of fun at the end of the day. And then Shin Godzilla, one of my favorite movies of the last decade and in the top three of my favorite Godzilla movies of all time. And don't worry, I know there are some Godzilla movies I'm missing. Don't worry, I will get to them at some point. I just saving them for later, trust me, it'll be worth it. Gravity from Alfonso Cuaron, starring Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. Uh, I've only seen this once in the theaters. Uh, I'm curious to see how it holds up on Blu-ray watching it at home. The Great Mouse Detective, my favorite Disney movie of their transitional or Bronze Age. Green Book, it's a good movie. I wouldn't have given this best picture the year it came out. And to be honest, the only reason I own this on Blu-ray is because uh, there was a party at work, they were having contests, giving out prizes, and one of them was a bunch of Blu-rays, and some of them were movies that I haven't seen, I didn't know if I wanted to get them, but uh, Green Book was the only one where I'm like, yeah, I've seen this already, I'll get it. I understand it has issues, and I I'll totally understand why people don't like it, but I think it's pretty decent for what it is. Gremlins, one of my favorite Christmas movies and one that I need to upgrade to Blu-ray because it's so friggin' good. Grindhouse, the Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino double feature that contains Planet Terror and Death Proof. I have not seen either of these movies and to be totally honest, even though I own it on Blu-ray, I'm kind of waiting until the new Beverly uh, shows both of these movies the way they were intended because I think that would make for a great viewing experience. Groundhog Day. After Ghostbusters, this is my favorite Bill Murray comedy. It's such a great script. Harold Ramis really directs this as best as he does. And both Bill Murray and Annie McDowell are just fantastic together. Guns Akimbo. Uh, I saw this during the lockdowns. It's a really crazy, insane action movie starring Daniel Radcliffe, Samara Weaving, and uh, I don't know... I don't know the actress's name, but she's going to be Sabine Wren in the Ahsoka series. So, yeah, this is a really underrated action film that's a lot of fun. 2018's Halloween. I do own the John Carpenter classic, so don't worry. Uh, I'll talk about that soon. But I actually really love this movie. Halloween kills and ends... Not so much. I don't have a desire to own those. The Hangover Extreme Edition on DVD. Uh, I have not seen this since theaters. I remember loving it, thinking it was the funniest movie I've ever seen until Joyride came out a couple weeks ago. And uh, I'm kind of scared to rewatch it since the sequels are just hot garbage, especially the third one. Ugh. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Uh, I remember seeing this with a friend of mine on DVD one night, and it was so funny. I still love this movie. The sequels, I actually don't mind them, but I'm not in a big rush to own them either. Okay, Harry Potter time. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. This is the only movie in the Fantastic Beasts trilogy now, because they're not making the fourth and fifth movie, uh, that I own. I think all the stuff with the magical creatures is a lot of fun. All the stuff with Grindelwald, it's, it's stupid, it's terrible, and not really well done. And then of course the Harry Potter 8 film collection. I didn't bother to get any of these movies on DVD or Blu-ray until the series was done, so I'm glad I waited and uh, just, to, just to own them all. Now I'm actually surprised they released this on Blu-ray, the Harry Potter 20th Anniversary Return to Hogwarts documentary. Uh, as a Harry Potter fan, this was such a uh, neat thing to watch, just seeing all the behind the scenes and how these kids pretty much grew up, just as I grew up with the series. So did many people in my generation, regardless of how much we don't like J.K. Rowling as a person right now. Michael Mann's Heat. 
I have not seen this. Again, another movie that I have not seen that I should probably get around to at some point. Spike Jonze's Her, my favorite movie of 2013, one of my favorite rom-coms. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is so good in this movie, as well as Scarlett Johansson, even though she's just a voice. The 50th anniversary Blu-ray of Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas from Chuck Jones. Next to a Charlie Brown Christmas, this might be my favorite TV special during the Christmas time. Uh, I don't own the Jim Carrey movie because I hate it, and I don't own the Illumination version because it's not spectacular enough to own. What is spectacular though is How to Train Your Dragon, which unfortunately I do not own on DVD. What am I talking about? I own it on DVD. I haven't upgraded it to Blu-ray, nor do I own the sequels, which are almost as good as this. Uh, one day, because this movie is amazing, I don't know about them doing a uh, live action version of it. I'm very skeptical on that. Inception, an amazing film by Christopher Nolan. After he did The Dark Knight, he pretty much had carte blanche to do whatever he wanted. This was his follow-up, and boy, what a follow-up it was. The Incredibles and The Incredibles 2, uh, uh, two great Pixar films. This one's obviously the better one, but I think the sequel is just as fun. I don't get the hate that it's gotten over the past few years. Um, it's still a really fun time. Independence Day, Roland Emmerich's only good movie in my opinion, and even then it's not a straightforward masterpiece. It's just a, a modern update, or at least modern by 90s standards, of a 50s alien invasion film. It's fun, but heavily flawed. Indiana Jones, the now uh, inaccurately labeled Complete Adventures, but given how I feel about Dial of Destiny, it's it, it's still the complete adventures for me. Inside Out, an amazing Pixar film. Uh, absolutely love it. I don't know why they're making a sequel because there's no reason for there to be a sequel to Inside Out. Lee Whannell's Invisible Man, one of the last movies I saw right before everything shut down. This is the best uh, Universal Monsters remake. I. I think it ever exists. I can't think of anything that even comes close to being this in terms of a remake of a Universal Monsters classic. The Iron Giant. Now I'm actually one of the few people that did see this in theaters. Everyone talks about how they didn't see it in theaters. I did. So I have bragging rights on that and uh, rightfully so because this is uh, this is an instant classic of a film. I absolutely love The Iron Giant. Another movie that I absolutely love is It Follows. Uh, along with Ex Machina, Dread, and Edge of Tomorrow, I heard nothing but good things about this movie, bought it blindly, didn't regret it at all. Love the disaster piece score. Uh, to be honest, the score in this movie reminds me of Halloween Horror Nights, so, which is just around the corner. I'm excited for Halloween Horror Nights. It's a Wonderful Life, one of the all-time classic Christmas movies from Frank Capra. It's just an amazing film. If you've never seen it, please watch it. Then I've got Jaws, the 30th anniversary DVD. I have the Universal 100th anniversary Digibook on Blu-ray, and I own the 45th anniversary 4K edition of Jaws. Why do I still own Jaws on DVD despite having it on both Blu-ray and 4K? Uh, why not? Because it's Jaws. That's the reason why, because it's fucking Jaws. But then I have the Jaws sequels on Blu-ray. Um, I mainly own this because of Jaws 2. I wanted to get Jaws 2 on Blu-ray, but for some reason it was really hard to find at Best Buy. So they had the three movie pack available. It was for a few dollars more, and I figured why not? Three movies, it's a cheaper deal than just getting one of them, even though, uh, yeah, Jaws 3 and 4, I mean, Jaws 3 is so bad it's good, and Jaws 4, well, I've talked about that movie earlier this year, but I mainly wanted this to get Jaws 2. Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius on DVD. I remember really liking this movie when I saw it. I haven't seen it since my childhood, and to be honest, does a Blu-ray of this even exist? I'm actually curious if this DVD still works after uh, over 20 years. Over 20 years, Jesus Christ. Uh, moving on, Jojo Rabbit, a really great film from Taika Waititi. I know he's gotten a lot of hate for Thor Love and Thunder, but Come on, the man's made more good movies than he's made bad, and this is one of those good ones. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, one of the biggest surprises of 2017. I don't own the first one with Robin Williams because I never saw it, and I don't own the next level because I don't love it as much as this one. It's, it's fine, but uh, it's pretty much goes through the same motions again. The animated Jungle Book on Blu-ray, the last Disney movie released while Walt was alive, and I own the Jon Favreau remake from 2016, which I still think is the best of these Disney live action remakes. Still haven't seen Cinderella, which a lot of people say is the best, or at least in competition with the Jungle Book is the best. Then I own Jurassic Park on Blu-ray 3D, 
why? I mean, I love Jurassic Park that much that I don't mind uh, owning multiple versions of uh, this movie, uh, even though I don't have a 3D uh, TV. I have the Jurassic Park Adventure Pack on DVD. Why do I still have this, even though I have Jurassic Park on Blu-ray? Well, because this actually has sentimental value for me. I actually bought it at Universal's Islands of Adventure in the actual Jurassic Park. So uh, I figured, hey, why not? I, I can have a little bit of bragging rights saying that I bought the Jurassic Park DVD collection at the actual Jurassic Park. But then of course I own the Jurassic Park trilogy on Blu-ray. Kind of weird for them to label this as the ultimate trilogy considering that while I like The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3, they're not even to the same standards as uh, the first Jurassic Park. And to be totally honest, I like Jurassic Park 3 more than I do Jurassic World, uh, which I do own on Blu-ray. It's a fun time, but it's no masterpiece. I, Ever since they announced Jurassic Park 4 in 2002, I think, I just kept waiting for the day that movie came out. And when it finally came out, it, uh, it didn't live up to my expectations, but I've learned to accept this for what it is. So Jurassic World, a lot of fun. I don't own Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom or Dominion, nor do I ever plan to own either of those movies. Because when people ask me how do I rank the Jurassic Park movies, it's simple. Huh? The order they came out, just like with the Jaws franchise. Next up I got King Kong Escapes. This is the second King Kong movie made by Toho after King Kong vs. Godzilla. It's campy, it's corny, it's goofy, it's stupid, it's silly. It's all those adjectives, but it's a lot of fun if you uh, are in the right mindset. Then I got King Kong, the ultimate Edition. This is the Peter Jackson remake, uh, which I really love. Yes, it's three hours. Yes, it may be a little too long, but uh, I still think this is a fantastic remake. Kingsman the Secret Service, a really great spy movie from Matthew Vaughn who made Kick-Ass and X-Men First Class. I don't own the Golden Circle because I don't like that movie for mainly two reasons. One, the uh, gratuitous moment where they stick a camera up a woman's vagina, which is really in poor taste. And two, they kill a pug. You lose instant points with me when you kill a pug. But moving on, I've got Knives Out, the Ryan Johnson who done it, and the reason why I'm mad that the sequel rights are with Netflix, because Netflix is so against releasing movies on physical media. But you know what, they've released some of their movies through the Criterion Collection, so uh, Netflix, please release Glass Onion on the Criterion Collection and pay your writers and actors so we can end these strikes. La La Land, the best picture winner of 2016 for only two minutes. Uh, I mean, all joking aside, I do love the first half of this movie. The second half kind of loses me and then the ending is just so long and so pretentious and much like Damien Chazelle's other movies. Lady Bird, a fantastic high school movie from Greta Gerwig who is quickly proving herself as to being one of the best directors working today. As of recording this video I have not seen Barbie but uh, I imagine by the time this video goes up, that review will be up. The Land Before Time. This is my favorite Don Bluth movie. Is it because of dinosaurs? Probably, but this movie has always had a big impact on my childhood, and so have the first couple of sequels. Even though they were direct-to-video, I was a young, impressionable kid, so I liked them. Uh, maybe those will one day be worth revisiting, just out of curiosity's sake, but this one, still a classic. Last Night in Soho, huh? I'm not the biggest fan of Baby Driver. I do like parts of it, but as time goes on, that movie's kind of gotten overrated for me, whereas this movie gets better as time goes on for me. It's got a great style to it, uh, it's well directed, it's thrilling, but Edgar Wright's comedies are still better. The Lego Movie and the Lego Batman Movie, both of these are really great, really funny. I don't own Lego Ninjago because I don't like Lego Ninjago, nor do I own the Lego Movie 2 because while I do like that movie, I'm in no immediate rush to own it, but these two Tons of fun. This one was a huge surprise when it came out in 2014. Jim Carrey's Liar Liar. This is from uh, Tom Shadyac, the same director of Bruce Almighty. And uh, this is a really good comedy as well. Great score that you can hear at the Universal Studios Hollywood Park. Then I've got The Lion King, the animated film on Blu-ray as part of the Diamond Edition and on 4K as part of the Walt Disney Signature Collection, even though Again, he was not alive when this movie came out. Then I've got The Little Mermaid on Blu-ray, a movie that throughout the years I've been fluctuating back and forth in how I like this movie, and I've ultimately come to the conclusion that it's really, really good. Looper, the very first movie I ever saw from Ryan Johnson, Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt are both amazing in this film, and it's a really creative science fiction movie. And then I've got The Lord of the Rings trilogy on DVD, A Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, 
and Return of the King. I do own the extended versions, I do own this trilogy on Blu-ray, and I will be reviewing them later this year. Now this next one, I'm not sure exactly where this DVD came from, but I have The Lost World, the 1925 silent film, which is the oldest movie that I own in my collection, and one that I would definitely like to review at some point. Again, I'm not exactly sure where this DVD came from. Love, Simon, a really great high school movie, and one that uh, is one of the best of the year it came out, 2018. All right, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. Mad Max Fury Road. It's an incredible movie. Visually stunning, the action's jaw-dropping, it's a gorgeous movie all around, but the plot and characters are paper thin. I still really enjoy this movie, but it's more spectacle than substance. The Man With No Name trilogy featuring Clint Eastwood. Fistful of Dollars is a fantastic remake of uh, Yojimbo. For a Few Dollars More is really good as well, and then of course The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly is a friggin' masterpiece. The Martian, one of my favorite Ridley Scott movies in recent memory. Matt Damon gives a fantastic performance and it's one of my favorite movies of 2015. Okay, it's time for another speed run because we're now at the Marvel Cinematic Universe and I've ordered these in chronological order starting with Captain America the First Avenger, Captain Marvel, Iron Man, Iron Man 2, The Incredible Hulk, Thor, The Avengers on regular Blu-ray and 3D Blu-ray. Why do I own this one? Well, because it's got a cooler cover, I like the gold look to it, and it came with a digital copy of both the movie and the soundtrack. Iron Man 3, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, For the Dark World, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Avengers Age of Ultron, Ant-Man, Captain America Civil War, Black Widow, Black Panther. These movies are falling all over the place because there's so goddamn many of them. Spider-Man Homecoming, Ant-Man the Wasp, Doctor Strange, Thor Ragnarok, Jesus there's a lot, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, not only on regular Blu-ray but also 4K. Spider-Man Far From Home. Spider-Man No Way Home. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Eternals, not the worst movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Thor Love and Thunder, it doesn't hold up but it's not as bad as everyone says it is. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. And finally, Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania, the worst film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, why do I own that? Well, I'm so neck deep in the MCU, more like chin deep, I should say, that I might as well just continue owning these movies till I die. At this point, it's just like, I'm a completionist with the MCU, so there's no turning back now. So that was the MCU. Moving on, I've got Mary Poppins, an instant Disney classic. I've got The Matrix, a really great science fiction film that I took me a while to see. I first saw it in film class. Memento, a really great Christopher Nolan film. And uh, I got a little sticker on it that says it's out of print. I got this from Amoeba Music, so... Yeah, it's a great place to get some rare and valuable Blu-rays for a good price. Men in Black on DVD. I don't hate the other two sequels. I mean, MIB International I do hate, but the other two I don't mind too much. In fact, I wouldn't mind owning those movies. <sighs> I don't know, mainly I want an excuse to upgrade this to Blu-ray because this one's the best. Midnight Paris, despite all my negative feelings towards Woody Allen as a person and some of his other movies, this one still holds up and honestly it's the only Woody Allen movie that I actually own. Then I've got the Mission Impossible movies. Uh, the first one from Brian De Palma, uh, definitely better than people give it credit for. The second one from John Woo, which is... I remember it being so stupid and so terrible, huh? but when I review that movie, uh, when part two of Dead Reckoning comes out, I'll see how I ultimately feel about it. Huh? Uh, I got Mission Impossible 3 from J.J. Abrams. This one's definitely good. Huh? I've got Ghost Protocol, which to this day is still my favorite of the Mission Impossible films from Brad Bird. Uh, I got Rogue Nation from Christopher McQuarrie, and then Fallout from Christopher McQuarrie. I did recently review Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. I'm looking forward to getting that on Blu-ray and looking forward to Part 2 whenever that film comes out. The Mitchells vs. the Machines, one of the few Netflix movies that actually got released on Blu-ray, and rightfully so, because it's fantastic. And I just found out that Jeff Rowe, the co-director of this film, is the director for the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, so that should be 
that gives me more hope than before. Moana, one of my favorite Disney movies of the uh, revival era, and I still cannot believe they're already making a live action version of this. It's too soon, guys. It's way too soon. Then I've got Modern Family Seasons 1 and 2 on DVD. I kind of fell off with this show. I don't remember why, because I remember this being so funny. Um, yeah, yeah, these two, this show's really funny. I have not had a major desire to watch the later seasons. A Monster Calls. I saw this movie pretty late when it came out in 2016, and the ending just fucked me up. It, this is a really powerful, gut-wrenching film. Huh? Uh, fantastically directed by J.A. Bayona. Monsters, Inc. I am not in a huge hurry to upgrade this to Blu-ray, but uh, it's still a great Pixar film nonetheless. And now it's time for the Monsterverse. Uh, again, like with the MCU, I've listed these in chronological order. We've got Kong Skull Island, a really good and fun movie. The first time Kong was able to break free from the trappings of the 1933 movie. I got Gareth Edwards' Godzilla, which I still think is one of my favorite Godzilla movies out there. Godzilla King of the Monsters, which has its flaws. It had some major flaws, but I feel like there's a lot to admire about this movie as a Godzilla fan. And then, of course, I've got Godzilla vs. Kong. I have it on both regular Blu-ray and 4K. Why do I own both of these? Well, when this movie was first released on home video, the 4K version was actually on a sale. So I just got it, and uh, I like the cover of the Blu-ray that much better, so I just felt like owning this also. Uh, don't judge me. Don't judge me in my weird Godzilla habits. Next up I have Mothra, a steelbook Blu-ray. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. And my favorite Toho monster movie next to the original Godzilla. Then I have the Rebirth of Mothra trilogy, which they all have their moments, both good and bad. I enjoy these movies for what they are. Are they as good as the Gamera trilogy? No, not even close. The Mummy Collector Set. Now this is a DVD that contains The Mummy, The Mummy Returns, and The Scorpion King. I would love to upgrade The Mummy movies, especially the first one, to Blu-ray, but that would mean owning The Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, and I don't want to own Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. The Muppet Movie, uh, the original classic from 1979, an amazing film. Uh, the Muppets, the 2011 movie, very well directed, very funny. Uh, surprisingly, I don't own a Muppet Christmas Carol. And uh, that's a crime against humanity that I don't own that movie, considering that it's my favorite version of A Christmas Carol. Then I own seasons one and two of MXC on DVD. Uh, they did release seasons three and four on DVD, but those are really hard to find, super expensive, and don't include the uh, live version that they shot in Orlando, and I say live in quote fingers. But uh, you can find the entire series on Tubi, and this show is just fucking hilarious. It's gross, it's raunchy, but it's so much... It gets me every time. I did a review for this in 2020. You should check that review out. The Nice Guys. It's a shame that this movie didn't really do that well when it came out, because it's a lot of fun. It's a shame Shane Black had to follow this up with The Predator. The Night House, a very underrated horror movie featuring Rebecca Hall. It's absolutely fantastic, and it's so good to see Rebecca Hall in more leading roles because she is a phenomenal actress. A Nightmare on Elm Street. I so desperately want to own this movie on Blu-ray. I want to upgrade this DVD to Blu-ray at some point, even if it means owning the sequels, which I like Nightmares 2 and 3 to an extent. I like 3, 2 to an extent, everything else except for New Nightmare. I don't care for. The Nightmare Before Christmas, my favorite Christmas movie of all time. Uh, just beautiful art style, beautiful animation, and it's fantastically directed by Henry Selleck. Uh, not Tim Burton. For anyone who still believes that Tim Burton directed A Nightmare Before Christmas, all I have to say is nope. Which is also the Jordan Peele movie I have right here. Uh, this one it gets better the more I think about it. It's a great uh, alien invasion movie. It has a lot of similarities to Jaws. Uh, and certainly better than us, which the ending to that movie is just so stupid. Old School, a really funny comedy from Todd Phillips who directed The Hangover and the Joker movie, which, ew. Not a movie that I think is one of the funniest I've ever seen, but certainly funny and raunchy. Then I have OSS 117, Cairo Nest of Spies. If you don't know what this movie is, this is from the same actor, actress, and director team that gave us The Artist. And basically, it's 
a spy parody, but done in the same way as Black Dynamite, where it feels like one of those classic uh, James Bond films, and not a straight up goofy parody like Austin Powers. There was a sequel that came out that I never saw, but I love this movie right here, and you should definitely check it out. Guillermo del Toro's Pacific Rim. This movie came out 10 years ago, actually, and Guillermo del Toro did talk about doing a special 10-year anniversary release of this film that I hope happens, because I would love to see Pacific Rim in theaters again. Huh? And then, of course, we have uh, Pacific Rim Uprising. I don't hate this movie. It's got its moments, but it certainly doesn't hold a candle to the first one. And what they do with... Uh, Mako is is just uh, it's it's insulting. Then I've got the Peanuts Holiday Collection, which not only comes with a uh, Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, and a Charlie Brown Christmas, but a few additional Peanuts shorts as well. Um, you can't go wrong with the Peanuts, and you also can't go wrong with the Peanuts movie, which I think this is uh, Blue Sky's best film next to the original Ice Age. In fact, I think this surpasses the original Ice Age. Pee Wee's Big Adventure, a really great Tim Burton movie and a fond memory of my childhood. I want to upgrade this to Blu-ray at some point. Peter Pan, the Diamond Edition on Blu-ray. This is my second favorite Disney animated movie in their Silver Age. It's absolutely fantastic, but uh, the remake that came out earlier this year not so much. Sticking with Disney classics, Pinocchio, the uh, Walt Disney Signature Collection, which hey, this one actually makes sense for it to be part of the Signature Collection because Walt Disney was alive when this movie came out. But yeah, this movie is absolutely amazing. It's a masterpiece in animation and the remake is hot garbage. Speaking of hot garbage, I've got Piranha 3D or just Piranha. This is the 2010 remake, which I actually dig a lot. It's campy, it's corny, it's got a Girls Gone Wild vibe to it that is certainly outdated by today's standards, but it's a lot of fun at the end of the day. Next up, I got the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy. I got the first one on Blu-ray, which is 20 years old this year, and for my money, still a masterpiece. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I love it, uh, and I enjoy the sequels. Uh, I like to upgrade these to Blu-ray at some point. I know when I reviewed at World's End, I didn't give it a very positive review, but it's got elements to like. Uh, I mean, it's better and more memorable than On Stranger Tides and Dead Men Tell No Tales, so uh, it's got that going for it, and I enjoy Dead Man's Chest. Now, here's a movie that I heard a lot of good things about but never found the time to watch yet, uh, Pitch Perfect. Uh, a lot of people were talking talking about how great this movie was when it came out in 2012, I never got around to watching it, so one day I'll get around to that. Next up, I've got the Pixar animated short film collection. I got volume one right here in red, volume two in green, and volume three in blue. I know a lot of people might be thinking, there's Disney Plus, so why do you want to own these on Blu-ray? Well, it's Pixar. It's Pixar, even if they are kind of hit or miss with their feature films, their shorts never miss. They're all really, really fun. The original Planet of the Apes on DVD. Uh, I would love to upgrade this movie to Blu-ray. Not sure if I want to buy the entire box set that contains the other movies before Tim Burton's remake, but this one is absolutely fantastic. And unfortunately, I feel like it's being overshadowed amongst the YouTube movie reviewers by the uh, rebooted trilogy, which these are great, don't get me wrong. Rise of the Planet of the Apes is absolutely fantastic, a big surprise when it came out. Dawn was really good as well, and War might be the best of the trilogy, in my opinion. It's hard to pick. Next up, I've got Pokemon Adventures in the Orange Islands. I briefly showed this DVD when I reviewed Pokemon the movie 2000. It's not the best season in the anime. Like I said in my review, the reason I got this was because it was under $10. And for a whole season of television, it's, it's worth getting, and I enjoy the old era of Pokemon anime. Polite Society, a really underrated movie of this year, and one of my favorite movies of this year so far. I think it's, yeah, uh, among uh, my favorite movies of the year, it's second next to, uh, what's it called, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Huh? Predator, a great action horror film starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. I really hope that they release Prey on Blu-ray at some point, uh, because it's just as good as this film right here. Princess and the Frog, the first movie in Disney's revival era, really great 2D animated film, and I'm really looking forward to the Princess and the Frog upgrade to Splash Mountain. Raging Bull, I gotta be totally honest, I don't care for this movie. I saw it, uh, I appreciate it, but 
it's just so dark and depressing. I'll still hang on to it. I know it's on the Criterion Collection, but given how I feel about this movie, I just don't have a desire to upgrade. Rango! Uh, this is an underrated animated movie from the last decade from Gore Verbinski. Really fun, really creative. If you haven't seen this film, you should watch it. It's one of my favorite movies of all time and one of my favorites of the last decade. The Raid Redemption and Raid 2. Uh, I've not seen the original Raid, which a lot of people accuse Dread of being a carbon copy of, which is impossible considering they came out the same year. And uh, Raid 2, I saw at Sundance. It was a really great memory and I saw a Q&A afterwards with the director, Gareth Evans. Uh, really, really cool movie. I should probably get around to watching the first one at some point. Ready or Not, one of my favorite underrated movies of the last decade and one of my favorite movies of 2019 from Radio Silence, who gave us the new Scream movies. Rebel Without a Cause from James Dean. This movie is, uh, it's pretty heavy-handed, and in the 1950s, a lot of these teen movies were not the comedies that we usually associate with. They were dark, heavy dramas. Robin Hood, the Disney animated movie. Uh, Disney Movie Club once again sent this to me. I didn't ask for it, and having watched it for the review I did two years ago, it's it's fine. It's it's okay. Robocop, the unrated director's cut. I know Arrow released a special edition Blu-ray of this and would like to try to upgrade to that Blu-ray because Arrow is pretty much the criterion collection for genre films. Like they just do a stellar job and pack everything up, but this Blu-ray looks pretty good even without the Arrow signature on it. Next I've got the Rocky Heavyweight Collection, which contains the first six Rocky movies. And then I've got Creed, which is the best film in the franchise since the original Rocky. I don't own Creed 2 or 3 because I'm not in a huge hurry to own those movies. While I do like them, uh, Creed is just so good that the others can't even come close. Rocky Horror Picture Show. I'm gonna be totally honest, this movie's not all that bad even if you watch it without the uh, live actors in front of the screen. Uh, it's it's goofy, it's campy, it's, it's fun. Uh, even without the midnight screenings, this movie's enjoyable. Romancing the Stone, a great film by Robert Zemeckis featuring Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner. Uh, it's you could tell that when you watch The Lost City with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum, that is a direct ripoff of Romancing the Stone, but in my opinion, nowhere near as good. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Uh, the Room. Again, I only own bad movies that are historically bad, and The Room is certainly one of those. And uh, even though this movie starts with a completely different letter, I had to pair up the disaster artist with The Room because these two movies pretty much complete each other. The Running Man, an Arnold Schwarzenegger science fiction action movie set in the year 2017 where the world is run by an egomaniac reality TV show host. Hmm. Just wow. It's a fun movie. The movie itself is a lot of fun. Save Yourselves. I saw this movie knowing nothing about it, uh, and what I got was such a delightful surprise that I looked up if it was available on Blu-ray, and it was already on Blu-ray. Like, oh, okay, yoink, I'll take that, and put it in my collection. Saving Private Ryan, one of Spielberg's best movies. Uh, this should have won Best Picture the year it came out. Uh, not Shakespeare in Love, which I admit I have not seen, but uh, come on, this is just... It's Saving Private Ryan. The Saw 8 film collection. Um, I've only seen Saw 4. The reason I got this is because I got it around the same time that Spiral was coming out uh, and this Blu-ray set was dirt cheap. I know there's a Saw 10 coming out this year. This year, I should emphasize. I don't have the time to go over all these movies and review them. I, I tortured myself with Transformers already. I don't think I'm ready to go through Saw just yet. Uh, and uh, you know what? It's funny that right before Saw, I was showing off Saving Private Ryan. So uh, in the case of putting these Blu-rays in alphabetical order, the Saw series just happens to be sandwiched between two Steven Spielberg movies where he won Best Director, the other being Schindler's List. <laughs> um, I didn't plan that at all. It was just a funny coincidence. I've never seen Schindler's List. Uh, it's a very heavy movie from what I understand. I have to be in the right mood to watch it. Um, 
but I will definitely get around to it at some point, especially considering that, like Jurassic Park, it's a Spielberg movie that turned 30 this year. School of Rock, I remember seeing this movie when it came out in theaters, I absolutely loved it, but didn't realize until a couple of years ago that it was actually directed by Richard Linklater. Um, makes perfect sense why I'd love this movie as much as I do. The original Scream trilogy. Uh, Scream 1's a masterpiece. I enjoy Scream 2. Scream 3, not so much. Scream 4, which is Wes Craven's final film, and a good one to go out on, regardless of whatever disgusting filter they used to film this movie on. And then I've got the two Scream movies from Radio Silence. Scream, or Scream 5, and uh, Scream 6, which I definitely enjoy and picked up just recently. The Searchers, a classic American Western from John Ford, starring John Wayne and Natalie Wood. Um, I understand that it might have some issues with a few audience members, but it's one of the perfect definitions of classic American Westerns. The Shape of Water, a beautiful movie from Guillermo del Toro, and my pick for Best Picture. I mean, it did win Best Picture, so this is the one year where I bet right on the money. Guy Ritchie's Sherlock Holmes, featuring Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law. Really great movie. These two have fantastic chemistry together, and it was a big surprise when it came out. The sequel, uh, don't really care for it. Then I got season one of the BBC Sherlock, starring Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. Uh, I've only seen the first episode, but considering that this season only is three episodes and they're feature length, I should probably finish this at some point. This was a gift from my brother. He had to make up for giving me Captain America on Blu-ray. The Shrek Ultimate Collection, which contains Shrek, Shrek 2, Shrek the Third, I mean Third, Shrek Forever After, Puss in Boots, and Shrek the Musical of all things. Huh, that's interesting. Then I own Puss in Boots The Last Wish, a really great movie from last year, along with the bad guys as being the time when DreamWorks actually out pixar to Pixar. Shutter Island, a very underrated Martin Scorsese movie, very different from what he usually does, and especially in the case that it's a short Martin Scorsese movie. It's only, how long is this movie? 137 minutes, so that's two hours and 17 minutes. Considering Scorsese's length for most of his movies, this is damn short. Sicario, there's a lot that I really love about this movie. It's brilliantly shot, it's well directed, um, yeah, I don't have much in terms of complaints. The Simpsons movie on Blu-ray. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Sleepaway Camp. Huh? I've not seen this movie, but I've heard really good things about it. And even though I have been spoiled by the ending, I feel like it's one of those things where Context is everything. Sleeping Beauty. Uh, this movie is so good mainly for its art direction. It's a gorgeous movie to look at uh, and uh, I think better and funnier than Cinderella. Slither, a worm horror movie from James Gunn that uh, I will possibly be talking about in the near future. Maybe? We'll see. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the very first Disney animated movie and a classic. Snowpiercer from Bong Joon-ho, a really great film that I haven't seen since it came out uh, and should really give it a rewatch. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, this movie actually surprised me quite a bit considering that I didn't like the first Sonic movie, but this one was a lot of fun. Okay, so remember when I said that Breakfast at Tiffany's was my mom's second favorite movie of all time? I think that might be the first, or it goes between uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's and The Sound of Music. Uh, this is such a, it's, it's a masterpiece in terms of American musicals. It's so, it's The Sound of Music. There's not much else to say about it. Now I did show off the MCU Spider-Man movies, but that's not all I own in terms of the webhead. I've got the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy on DVD. That is incorrect. I had it on DVD at one point, but since upgraded to Blu-ray. I really like these movies. I even enjoy Spider-Man 3 for all its faults. But of course they fail in comparison to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which is an Excellent Spider-Man movie and still my favorite. Now I've got Spectacular Spider-Man. I know it was recently uh, put up on Disney Plus, but you know, you can't rely on streaming all that much, uh, which is why I own it on Blu-ray. And I haven't seen it yet, but I should get around to it. The SpongeBob movie, Sponge Underwater. Regardless of all the live action segments that they promoted, most of the movie actually is animated and it was funnier than I ever anticipated. Sadly, I don't own the first SpongeBob movie on Blu-ray, which I think is the better one. Okay, Star Trek time. I've got the Kelvin Timeline movies here. Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness. I love the first one from J.J. Abrams. Into Darkness, I like up until the end. And then I've got Justin Lin's Star Trek Beyond, which 
we all thought was going to be terrible but ended up being quite good. It was basically a big budget version of the original television show. So lots of fun. I'm sad that the movie didn't perform as well as it possibly could have. Lack of marketing, honestly. And then much like with my Indiana Jones Complete Adventure Blu-ray set, Disney had to go and make my Star Wars Complete Saga Blu-ray set incomplete. Uh, although I'm willing to acknowledge that there are other movies that exist. The original trilogy is excellent, even with all those terrible special editions, and there's a lot to admire about the prequels. Speaking of which, I do own Revenge of the Sith on DVD. Why? Well, there are some bonus features on the uh, DVD here that didn't quite make the jump to the Blu-ray. So that just goes to show you, don't completely get rid of your DVDs, and I'll, I'll have more examples of that later on. Continuing on with Star Wars, I got Solo, a Star Wars story, which is it's fun. I don't like when they do a checklist of here's how Han got the Falcon, here's how he met Chewie, here's how he met Lando, here's how he did the Kessel Run, but uh, it's still fun regardless. Uh, Rogue One, a really great film, really great Star Wars movie. Then I've got the sequel trilogy, uh, The Force Awakens, and The Last Jedi, which I still love. I still think the first two-thirds of the sequel trilogy are great, especially The Last Jedi. But then I own The Rise of Skywalker. Why do I own this? Well, for Star Wars, I feel like I'm a completionist. And also, as time goes on and some of their shows have kind of shed light on things that would happen in this movie, it, it starts to make a little more sense. So similar to how The Clone Wars added context to the prequels, uh, some of their shows like The Bad Batch and The Mandalorian have started to add context to The Rise of Skywalker. Still not a good movie, but it's one that I don't feel embarrassed about owning. Next up is actually kind of interesting because I own Still Breathing on both DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, this movie was directed by my dad, uh, and I don't just own this because it's my dad's film but uh, it's actually really charming. It's a really good movie. Both Brendan Fraser and Joanna Going are very charming. Moving on, I've got the Steve McQueen collection. This contains The Great Escape, The Magnificent Seven, The Thomas Crown Affair, and The Sand Pebbles. I've seen The Great Escape on TV. The other three movies I have not watched. Strangers on a Train, a Hitchcock classic that I reviewed in 2020 that I first saw in film school. Uh, it's, it's really good. Sunset Boulevard, not my favorite Billy Wilder movie, but certainly an impressive one nonetheless. Super 8 from J.J. Abrams, I admit I have not seen this movie since it came out, but I remember really enjoying it. Was it very reliant on Spielberg? Yeah, but considering that Spielberg produced it, I think it was kind of okay. Next up, I have the bad Super Mario Brothers movie. I bought this on DVD solely to review it in 2020. And then we've got the good Super Mario Brothers movie. I know I originally said watch at your own risk when I reviewed the movie, but since then I have rewatched it in theaters and kind of liked it better the second time. So I thought, yeah, why not own it on Blu-ray? Next up is Team America. Fuck yeah! Coming again to save the motherfucking day, yeah! I know Shout Factory is going to reissue this movie on Blu-ray with a lot of new bonus features, so I'm looking to upgrade, but this movie is, is goddamn funny. Ted. I might not be the biggest fan of Family Guy, but Seth MacFarlane's directorial debut with Ted Pretty good first time, huh? Mark Wahlberg and Ted actually have really good chemistry with each other, and it's funny, it's charming. Huh? I don't own Ted 2, and I'm really curious on how that TV show on Peacock is going to do. Next, I got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles triple feature. These are the first three uh, live action films featuring Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Secret of the Ooze, and uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 which for some reason they've subtitled as Turtles in Time, even though that's not the name of the movie. It's the name of the awesome video game. Oh boy. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I don't own any of the other movies, but I am looking forward to Mutant Mayhem. The Terminator. I really wish that there was a James Cameron approved Blu-ray of this film, but uh, this is probably the best Blu-ray of the Terminator that you can get. Uh, it's the Terminator. It's excellent. Uh, the only thing that holds it back is that Terminator 2 exists. Uh, in fact, this is the very first Blu-ray that I bought. Uh, Terminator 2, the Skynet edition, uh, was the first time I ever bought a Blu-ray and uh, got me obsessed with collecting them even more than I have with DVD. That being said, I still own Terminator 2 on DVD. Uh, why? Because it's Terminator 2, that's why. I don't need a reason beyond that. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. I have not seen any of the other movies except for the Jessica Biel remake from uh, 
what's it called, Platinum Dunes. But this movie, no horror movie creeps me the hell out the way the original Texas Chainsaw does. They Live. This was one of the movies that I was supposed to review last year for Halloween, but because I caught COVID, I couldn't get around to reviewing it. So I'm making it up for this year. And moving on from John Carpenter's They Live, we go to John Carpenter's The Thing, a really fantastic horror movie from uh, 1982. Uh, uh, Great year for movies in general. And then I've got James Cameron's Titanic. Outside of Piranha 2 The Spawning, it's still my least favorite of his movies, but still a masterpiece in every sense of the word. Now it's Toho time. I've got Rodan and War of the Gargantuas from Classic Media. I've got the uh, three movies Toho pack from, uh, this is from Media Blasters, which contains The Mysterians, Varen, and Matango, all directed by Shiro Honda and also directed by Shiro Honda, the Icons of Sci-Fi Toho collection, which contains the H-Man, Battle in Outer Space, and the DVD version of Mothra. Apparently, the Criterion Collection has the rights to all of these movies, so I'm hoping for a, a Shiro Honda science fiction box set similar to how they released the Godzilla Showa movies on Blu-ray. Then we've got Top Gun, a classic staple in terms of 80s action. Not a flawless movie, unlike its sequel, Top Gun Maverick, which is just movie magic in every sense of the word. I love it. Total Recall, another great quotable Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. <laughs> you think this is the real Quaid? It is. Touch of Evil, directed by Orson Welles, starring him as well as Charlton Heston and Janet Leigh. And this also comes with uh, the director's notes uh, from Orson Welles. Uh, I never actually read through this. I'm curious to see what those look like, considering that uh, there's three different versions of this movie. The theatrical version, the preview version, and the reconstructed version, based on said notes. So. It'll be interesting to watch. I've seen the theatrical version, but not the reconstructed one. Then I've got the Toy Story movies. Uh, Toy Story 1, a masterpiece. Toy Story 2, another masterpiece. Toy Story 3, a dark masterpiece. And then Toy Story 4, regardless of whatever hate the movie has gotten, I, I still enjoy it. Is it the weakest of the four films? Yes. Am I excited for Toy Story 5? Not really, because I think they should just stop making Toy Story movies, but... You know, I said the same thing about four and they proved me wrong. Training Day, I know this is Corey Coleman's favorite movie of Double Toasted. I myself have not seen it. I should probably get around to that one day. Then I've got Transformers the movie. Oh, I'm sorry, The Transformers, the movie on Blu-ray from Shout Factory. I've got Transformers Prime season one on DVD, which is maybe my favorite interpretation of the Transformers outside of the High Moon Studio games. And then I've got Bumblebee on Blu-ray. Uh, I really dug this movie. I look forward to getting Rise of the Beasts on Blu-ray as well, even though that movie, I don't know, it, it's got its flaws, but it's a step in the right direction, like I said in my review. Tremors, uh, much like with uh, They Live, I was supposed to review this movie last year for Halloween, but never got around to it. I'm gonna rectify that mistake this year. Trick or Treat, uh, possibly my favorite Halloween movie. I first saw it in 2019 and boy did it live up to expectations. It is such a pure delight in terms of the Halloween spirit. Tron, the original film from 1982 that came out on Blu-ray around the same time Tron Legacy came out on Blu-ray. I don't have much of a desire to upgrade to Blu-ray because it's a, the first Tron's a weird movie. Yeah? Uh, Tron Legacy has its issues but the visual look, Joseph Krasinski's direction, and the Daft Punk score all make this worth it and make it a sequel that I think is better than the original. Tropic Thunder, a great performance from Robert Downey Jr. and the rest of the cast as well, and a really epic takedown of Hollywood basically taking down themselves. And now that both the WGA and SAG-AFTRA are on strike, they, uh, I think they need to make another movie like this uh, based on what's currently going on right now. True Grit, a uh, fantastic Coen Brothers Western that gave us Haley Steinfeld, Jeff Bridges, Matt Damon, and Josh Brolin also give terrific performances. Uh, and then uh, True Lies, uh, an underrated James Cameron film and one that 
like I said in my review, I'm sure not many people realize was directed by him. I'm gonna go over these two really quickly. I've got two Turner Classic Movies, uh, four movie collections. The first one is Hitchcock Thrillers, which has Suspicion, Strangers on a Train, The Wrong Man, and I Confess. The other is uh, Science Fiction Adventures, which contains Them, The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, World Without End, and Satellite in the Sky. Next up, we have The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Uh, Nick Cage and Pedro Pascal are fantastic in this movie. Up Great, a fantastic action thriller from Lee Whannell. I think I like The Invisible Man a little more, but this is still a great movie. Versus, a zombie action movie from Ryuhei Kitamura, the director of Godzilla Final Wars, and uh, one that I want to check out at some point, because people have been recommending this movie to me. Now, the biggest guilty pleasure you're ever going to see in this DVD Blu-ray 4K collection, Viva La Bam, the complete series on DVD. Uh, uh, the closest that Jackass will ever feel to being a fake show. Uh, I know it's not all that good, it's got some cringy moments, especially in today's society, but something about it that just, it feels fun. The Wallace and Gromit Complete Collection on DVD. I wanna upgrade this to Blu-ray, not just to have these on Blu-ray, but because the DVD version I have, for some reason, they're in full screen. I don't know why, because I wanna see them in glorious widescreen. Wally! My favorite non-Toy Story Pixar movie, and in my top 10 of movies of all time. I wanna upgrade to the uh, Criterion 4K, because, uh, it's Wally. I've got Walking with Dinosaurs on DVD, as well as Allosaurus, a Walking with Dinosaurs special. These are the BBC documentaries that came out in the late 90s, early 2000s, and they're pretty good. The Walt Disney Animation Short Films Collection. Uh, this is a really great compilation of a bunch of short films. Uh, really clever, really funny, really charming. Wedding Crashers. I've not seen this movie in a while, but I remember it to be really funny. Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn have great chemistry with each other. Steven Spielberg's West Side Story on 4K. I love the original and I love this one. Um, he basically made the impossible possible by making a West Side Story remake that's just as good, if not sometimes better than the original. When Harry Met Sally, a great romantic comedy that I saw for the first time in 2020. Billy Crystal, Meg Ryan, and Rob Reiner, it's, they're all great. Rob Reiner's direction's fantastic. The script by uh, Nora Epor Epron, I hope I pronounced her last name correctly, is just excellent all around. This movie is pure gold. Whiplash. I may not love this movie like so many other people, but it is expertly edited. It's well done. J.K. Simmons is friggin terrifying. White Christmas. My mom's favorite Christmas movie of all time. Uh, it's just an excellent movie. Well, at least until the third act. I'm not a huge fan of the third act when there's that failure to communicate cliche that I hate. Uh, but anyway, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? I love this movie, love, love, love it. It's my favorite Robert Zemeckis movie next to Back to the Future, and I wish I could find this on Blu-ray because I, it needs an upgrade. It needs an upgrade badly. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Gene Wilder makes this movie what it is, and for being uh, more of a family movie, it can get freaky and terrifying at points, uh, especially that tunnel sequence. The Wind Rises, as much as I really love Hayao Miyazaki, this is the only one of his movies that I own. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, this is a really great movie. One of his underrated ones, I think. Uh, Wings, I've never seen this movie, but this is the first film to ever win the Oscar for Best Picture. This will be worth checking out at some point. The Wizard of Oz, just an excellent classic film. Um, yeah, it's The Wizard of Oz. It's a masterpiece. The Wolf of Wall Street, a really crazy, insane comedy from Martin Scorsese. A little too long, but it's never boring. Wreck-It Ralph, uh, uh, really enjoyed this movie. This would have actually been my pick for best anime feature over Brave, but uh, I like both movies. Next up, I got Pearl, which should normally be in the P section, but because it's a prequel to X, uh, I figured to just put it uh, in the same category. I just figured X came first technically, so therefore I'll lump Pearl and X together. I think I like Pearl a little more, but X is great, and I'm super excited for Maxine. All right, X-Men time. I've got the box set containing X-Men First Class, X-Men, X2, X-Men United, and X-Men The Last Stand. I love those first three movies, X-Men Last Stand, not so much. Then I've got uh, The Wolverine, uh, James Mangold. I've got X-Men Days of Future Past, the theatrical cut, and the rogue cut. These two have different bonus features, which is why I keep both of them together. 
uh, regardless of how I feel about Brian Singer as a person, those movies are still good. Deadpool, uh, uh, really great superhero comedy. Ryan Reynolds killed it as this character. Logan, uh, one of the best comic book movies of the last decade and such a great at the time, sign off for Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, but now we know he's coming back in Deadpool 2. I'm sorry, not Deadpool 2, I meant Deadpool 3, because Deadpool 2 is right here. Uh, this movie doesn't quite hold up as well as I remember, especially after seeing Once Upon a Deadpool, the PG-13 cut. Uh, it just kind of pointed out all the things that didn't quite work about this, but uh, Zazie Beetz makes for a fantastic domino, and I hope she comes back in the MCU because she's that good. Then I've got Young Frankenstein, my favorite Gene Wilder movie, and my favorite Mel Brooks movie, Blue Card! Never gets old. Huh? Zombieland. I have not upgraded this to Blu-ray. I probably should. I enjoyed Zombieland Double Tap, but I'm not in a real hurry to get it on Blu-ray myself. Zootopia. I don't know why I own the 3D version of this, but uh, it's a fantastic Disney animated movie. And there you go. That's the end of this video. Now, I know what some of you are thinking right now. No. No, I know you have some movies out there, Alexander, that you absolutely love, that you have showcased before, that you haven't talked about in this video. And you are indeed right, because this is only part one of my DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K collection. Uh, tune in next time, I don't know when that'll be, when I talk about my box set collection. I have showcased a few box sets in this video already, but I'm talking about the ones that I couldn't make time for because uh, they kind of deserve their own video. But until next time, this has been part one of my DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K collection. And now I want to know what you guys think about the collection. Which of these do you own? Are there any that you want to own but don't? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to get notifications. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and now Threads. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day and take care of yourselves.